Ben DiGravio, reporting for Kids First. And today, I'm so excited to be speaking with Bertie Gregory about his new film series, Epic Adventures with Bertie Gregory, which will begin streaming in September 2022 on Disney+. Plus. Bertie Gregory, an award-winning wildlife filmmaker and photographer, is known for his contributions to the most amazing wildlife documentaries, which include National Geographic's Wild and BBC's Planet Earth. His most recent project is called The Epic Adventures with Bernie Gregory, and he'll be talking to us today about his upcoming series. Thank you, Mr. Gregory, for joining us today. Oh, no, thanks for having me. It's good, good to chat with you. I'm thrilled to find out more about the series, so let's jump right in. Sounds good. You're all known for your many contributions to natural history documentaries, and have been referred to as the face of the new generation. I'm curious, was there any one person who you call your biggest inspiration while on this journey? Well, to say there was one person I think would be too difficult to answer. So I'm gonna cheat and say there's two people if that's all right. Um, so the, the first one uh, is sort of the, the godfather of wildlife filmmaking, Sir David Attenborough. Um, and he's, I mean, just such a, a legend. And I grew up watching, uh, yeah, documentaries that he that he presented. So he was certainly uh, an inspiration. I've been lucky enough actually to to film him a couple of times. Um, and yeah, he's he's just a, an incredible person, uh, so knowledgeable, so passionate, and uh, he's done yeah a lot for the for the natural world. And then more more recently, I guess the other person who's big inspiration to me is a, a guy called Steve Winter. Uh, and he's one of the National Geographic magazine photographers. Uh, and he specializes in big cats. So anytime there's sort of a big cat story in National Geographic magazine, he was the photographer. And he was a big inspiration to me because he gave me my first job at National Geographic. So I assisted him uh, for two years and we filmed uh, leopards and jaguars, which was, uh, which was amazing. He, yeah, he totally took me under his wing. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. This multi-part adventure series takes us to some of the most remote places on the globe, documenting some of the greatest challenges of wildlife. What can you share what you believe is the biggest hurdle for natural world? I mean, that's a, that's a very big question. And, and, you know, sadly, the natural world is in big trouble. Um, and we saw that on, on this series, you know, even in the world's remotest corners, you still see the hand of humans sort of bearing down on, on habitats. I guess the biggest hurdle, uh, I mean, is, is, us, is us humans. Um, we have the ability to destroy the natural world. And that is very scary. Um, but what gives me hope is that we have the ability to destroy it, but we also have the ability to, um, to, to look after it. And, and, you know, looking after wildlife is, is much more than just a nice thing to do. It's, it's great news for wildlife and it's, it's great news for people. Um, and a real positive story, actually, that, that we encountered was in, the, uh, in one of our episodes, we went to Antarctica to try and film a gathering of whales. Um, and uh, it's thought to be the biggest gathering of whales on the planet. Um, and uh, sorry, I should say the biggest gathering of feeding whales uh, on the planet. Um, and that gathering did not happen 50, 60 years ago because we used to hunt whales commercially um, and they were decimated. Uh, we went for a, the, the whale we were looking for was called a fin whale. It's the world's second biggest whale behind the blue whale. And uh, in the Southern Ocean, um, they were hammered down to just 2% of their original population. So they were harvested on an unbelievable scale. But thanks to the ban on commercial whaling and protection, they're now starting to come back. And yeah, they're gathering in, in numbers to feed off of Antarctica that, uh, you know, it was just unthinkable uh, just 20 or 30 years ago. So that was a really good news story. Um, and, and to see, yeah, as many whales as we did all together, having one big party uh, with penguins and albatross and all kinds of other marine life was, was pretty spectacular. I can certainly understand how this could be a struggle for wildlife. In so making... In making the epic adventures with Bertie Gregory, you spent two years capturing the footage of outrageous animal, be animal, be animal behavior. What example can you share from this experience? 
Uh, well, one of my most memorable encounters um, was filming hammerhead sharks. And we were filming uh, big schools of hammerhead sharks. And well, you know, you, you just mentioned about what, what's the biggest hurdle to, you know, the natural world. Well, sharks are having a really, really bad time um, because they're being fished and their fins are being cut off and that's being used to make soup. Uh, which is just crazy. Um, and so hammerhead sharks have a very, very big dorsal fin. That's the fin on the top of their back. Um, and that means that they are, uh, yeah, a prized sort of uh, a prize shark for, for, for this suit because they've got such a big fin. Um, and so they're not doing very well. And there's only a handful of places where they still gather in these incredible numbers. So that's what we were, we were trying to film. And we filmed them off uh, a little island 350 miles off the coast of Costa Rica called Cocos Island. And if you've seen Jurassic Park, um, this is Jurassic Park in real life. It's in the middle of nowhere, bright blue ocean, and then suddenly this big green mountain rises up out, out the water and it's covered in jungle. Um, and there's these big frigate birds that look like pterodactyls flying around. And if you dive in the water there, um, uh, it's possible to see sharks. And the reason it was a particularly cool encounter was because I think everyone thinks that sharks are really confident and bold and brave, but actually hammerhead sharks are very shy and they get scared by bubbles. So normally when you're underwater, you wear scuba diving equipment, but that makes lots of bubbles. And so if you do that with hammerhead sharks, you can't get close to them. They just get scared and swim away. So we were using um, some new technology. It was called a rebreather. And uh, it's, it's like something out of Star Wars. It recycles your air and means that you don't make any bubbles. Um, and what that means is you're very, very quiet. Um, so we were able to sort of sneak up on the sharks uh, and that meant we could get right in amongst, uh, you know, a big school of a hundred hammerhead sharks. Um, and they were having a, they were having a great time. It's thought that they gather uh, to mate. Um, so yeah, they were in sort of a hammerhead, hammerhead uh, shark party. Wow. That's just so amazing. We're going to be, we're all going to be so excited to see this within the series. I read that this series will share some never been filmed behind the scenes style of footage. That sounds so exciting. Can you give us an example of the, can you give us an example of this? Yeah, so we, we tried to do quite a few different things um, and we were definitely very ambitious. Uh, I think sort of the biggest first uh, that we tried to get that hadn't, hadn't been filmed on, on the scale was, was the, the fin whale gathering that I mentioned in Antarctica. Um, uh, some, some scientists have seen it before. I'd actually uh, seen it before very, very briefly on, an, on a previous expedition for a different filming project. Um, and I, I sort of got a glimpse of what might be possible, what might really be going on. And um, at that time, the record for the most number of fin whales gathered together was 150. We set that record. Um, and then when we went back, uh, to for this series to really see what was going on, we actually ended up doubling that record. So we saw three hundred fin whales all together in a in a big party. Um, you know uh, the fact that this is a behind the scenes series, um, and I think that's been really special, sort of bringing this uh, to life because. Normally when, when I go on a filming project, we're there to film, we have a very particular goal and that's what we're there to film. But all of these sort of exciting things happen to us along the way um, that we sort of remember as, as stories uh, that we tell our friends, but to actually have a crew with us now to, to sort of capture all of the adventures that we get up to alongside the wildlife has been really, really cool. I personally think that this type of footage is what makes natural history documentaries so appealing. Some of the filming for this took place in some of the harshest and most remote ecosystems on, the, on Earth. What are some obstacles you faced while capturing this footage? Well, so one thing that we really wanted to do for the eagle episode was we were filming an eagle called a crowned eagle, which is a really, really big bird. Um, and uh, they're famous for being Africa's most powerful eagle. So they've got really, really big, strong talons, their claws. 
Um, and their back talon is actually bigger than a lion's tooth. Like that's how big and powerful they are. And we wanted to film what happens. So they're, they're known as being this really big, uh, you know, athletic predator, but we wanted to see what their home life was like as well. And to do that, we needed to film them at their nest. Now, a crowned eagle, like any bird, has a nest, um, but it's a very, very big nest uh, and it's 50 feet up a tree. And uh, they also are very protective of it. And we thought, well, we want to see if we can get a camera inside that nest tree, a little secret camera, so we could film the intimate moments between you know, the, the mother and the little chick. And that meant that we had to climb the tree that the eagle was in. Um, and I'd talked to lots of scientists before to make sure that this was going to be a safe thing to do. And the scientists said that these eagles hunt their prey. They hunt monkeys. And we're just like a big monkey, basically. So, so it could have see, seen us as prey. But he said that um, what you need to do is they love to come up behind their prey. That's how they attack. So if you get a picture of your face and you stick it to your back, they think that you've got a face on your back. And so they don't know which way to come up behind you. So we, uh, yeah, stuck our face, pictures of our faces to our backs, which was, it felt pretty silly at the time. Um, and then we got a huge catapult and using the catapult, we fired a little bean bag with a string up over one of the branches in the nest tree. And then we used that to pull a rope through and then we climbed up that rope into the eagle's nest. And while we were up there, the female, uh, we waited for her to leave the nest. She went off to, to go and hunt. Um, we started climbing and while we were climbing, she came back and saw us and we were like, OK, this could be interesting. What's she going to do here? But fortunately, she was pretty relaxed and she just sat in the nest tree near the nest and just watched us while we very quickly installed this little camera. Um, and then we rappelled uh, down back to the ground and um, yeah, then backed off. And the, the camera we could uh, monitor with a little joystick in a little tent that was on the ground. And that using that, we could, we could see inside the nest and we could see all the amazing things that go on with the mother and the little chick, how the mother feeds the chick. And also my, the thing that I found most funny was They've got these massive claws, right? It's like having big, big knives on your feet. And the chick is tiny. And seeing how delicate mum was and how careful she was walking around the nest, making sure that she didn't accidentally, you know, stab, stab her little chick. That was, uh, that was definitely a, a real highlight for me. You and your crew are certainly wildlife warriors. Thank you for sharing that with us. Our world is rapidly changing, and some of this change has a negative impact on wildlife and their ecosystems. What can we do as a younger generation to do to make certain that our wildlife is not lost forever? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think the most important thing is that everything we need, everything we do, we just need to think about the, the implications of, of wildlife. And uh, I think all too often we sort of do stuff and then, oh, you know, think about the, the effects on, on the natural world. So I think that's that's the most important thing. Um, and then in terms of, uh, I guess, the 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 day to day. Um, yeah, it's 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 just valuing wildlife, um, you know, really appreciating it. And I guess that starts with going out and, and looking at it and get try and getting as many people uh, excited about it as possible. Um, and then, yeah, I think just not being, um, yeah, not, yeah, I guess, uh, it, well, I guess in terms of little things you can do every day, I mean, yeah, just think about everything you do, how does that affect the, the natural world? And a, and a great place to start is, is what you eat. Um, so yeah, do lots of research and, and figure out the effect that, you know, find out where your food comes from which types of food are more damaging to the environment and, and yeah, make, make choices because we all eat every day. Um, and so, yeah, that's a, a great first step, I guess, to, to, to caring about the, the environment and looking after it. I'm hoping your surveys will inspire people to make positive change for wildlife. Thank you for talking with me, Mr. Gregory. Epic Adventures with Brody Gregory releases in September, 2022 and will stream on Disney Plus. So spread the word this is a series you're not going to want to miss. 
I'm Dominic DeGravio, reporting for Kids First. Be sure to like, subscribe to our channel to see more reviews and interviews from me and my amazing teammates. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey. These are my adventures. Ah.